everyone, I'm Catherine, I'm the Physics Access Officer at Oxford University and today I'm going to be having a look at question 9 of the 2011 PAC paper and I'll be going through how I would go about solving this problem. So, what does it say? It says, given the functions y1 equals x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x plus 3 and y2 equals x squared minus 3x minus 4. Find the values of x between 0.8 and 1.9, which give the maximum and minimum difference between y1 and y2. So y1 is a cubic, so it's going to go like that. Uh, and y2 is a quadratic. So within that range of 0.8 to 1.9, the difference between those two curves is going to vary. And there's going to be some point where uh, that difference is maximum and some point where that difference is minimum. And that's what we need to find. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to set up a new function, if you like, um, that is the difference between y1 and y2. Uh, so I'm going to call that uh, big Y. So big Y equals Y1 minus Y2. Uh, as in, that's how I'm defining it. Um, so big Y equals uh, X cubed. And then we've got minus 3X squared minus X squared. So that will be minus 4X squared. And we've got 2x minus minus 3x, so that will be plus 5x. And then we've got plus 3 minus minus 4, so plus 7. Now what we want to do is find the maximum and minimum values, or the points at which this function is maximised or minimised. So... The standard way to do that would be to differentiate it and set the derivative to zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to go dy by dx and that equals 3x squared minus 8x plus 5 and looking for turning points so set that equal to zero. So now we've got a quadratic uh, and we want to know the x values where this is true, where this is zero. So what we need to do is solve that quadratic. Um, I don't know how to factorise that off the top of my head. So quadratic formula seems like a sensible approach. Quadratic formula tells us that x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a, and in this case a is 3, b is minus 8, and c is 5. Uh, so, substituting that in, we have 8 plus or minus the square root of 8 squared is 64, minus 4 times 3 times 5, all divided by uh, 2a, so that is 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, this stuff inside the square root, we've got 64 minus 4 times 3 is 12, 12 times 5 is 60, so we've got 64 minus 60, which is just 4, square root of 4 is 2. So, we've got 8 plus or minus 2, over 6. So our two answers are going to be 10 over 6 or uh, 6 over 6, so that's just 1. And 10 over 6 is going to be uh, 1 and 4 sixths or 1 and 2 thirds, so that's going to be 1.67 uh, and 1. So those are our two turning points uh, are maxima and or minima, uh, but at the moment we don't know which one is which. Um, so we could 
have a think about the behaviour of this quadratic um, and what those solutions mean. Uh, so it's going to look something like we're going to have a y-intercept of 5 um, and then our two solutions are 1.67 and 1 uh, so maybe that's 1 and 1.67 um, so our quadratic must look something like that and so we could then look at the gradient at these two points and from the gradient at those two points think about whether it's going to be a maximum or a minimum um, but actually the maybe the more straightforward way the more systematic way perhaps um, is simply to take the second derivative so uh, we've got dy by dx is 3x squared minus 8x plus 5 if we differentiate that again then we will have uh, d2y by dx squared and that is going to be uh, 6x minus 8. And then what we want to do is we want to substitute these two values uh, into our second derivative. And if our second derivative comes out negative then we must have a, uh, we must be at a maximum if our second derivative comes out positive, we must be at a minimum. So, um, at x equals 1, d2y by dx squared, second derivative equals 6 minus 8, which is minus 2, which is less than 0. Uh, so, that must be a maximum. And... Uh, at x equals 10 over 6, d2y by dx squared equals 6 times 10 over 6 minus 8. Uh, so that's going to be 10 minus 8, which is 2, which is greater than 0. So that is going to be a minimum. So... The two values of x between 0.8 and 1.9, which give the maximum and minimum values, are uh, x equals 1, which gives us a maximum, and x equals 10 over 6, or 1.67, which is a minimum. So, that's how I would go about solving this problem. Uh, there will be other ways to tackle it, but this is the way that makes the most sense to me. I hope that has been useful and I hope we see you again soon for another one of these videos. Thanks for joining us.